choose. Hallelujah. <laughs> I believe everybody should have got touched this morning and still getting touched. Thank you, Master. Would you turn to John 14, please? Ah, love it. Love it. <laughs> Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. <laughs> John 14. Thank you, Master. Glory, glory, glory. Let the words of life, light, penetrate each and every one of us today and bring the character of Christ in Jesus' name. You know, I was sitting in the presence of the Lord and I just kept kind of like seeing everything that's been going on globally and where we're at. And, uh, and, it, and it was almost like the enemy was causing such a scatter. You know, God allows a scatter to come sometimes so that the righteous can go into positions because they get too comfortable in places. They get too comfortable in life. And, but I began to see the enemy scattering and putting individuals on wrong pathways because of fear, because of anxiety, stress, because of deception, because of lust and everything that's going on. And if you really step back and look exactly what's going on in the world, man, there is pa multiple pathways Multiple pathways that are going on all over the world. And these deceptive pathways people are following during a time of chaos, they're looking for help. And the enemy loves to hand out false religions, doctrines of demons, uh, new age movements, all kinds of things. Uh, people are flocking to organizations. You know, as a... A, a child, a young adult, many children fall into gangs because they're looking for a place of comfort for someone to accept them. These are false places. And then they begin to live that style that they're associated with. I mean, when I was young and every time I was thrown out of school, um, I had one of my brothers that were older be my father, and he would get me back into school. And then I would last a week or two until my real father found out I was missed like half the year. But in that, people begin to flock for places for help or comfort or acceptance. So now we see all these regimes right now where, like, you got Antifa. Antifa is nothing but an antichrist organization. It's a regime of antichrist. They actually believe they're fulfilling the book of Revelation by being the antichrist army. That's how goofy they are. But the word says that the evil will destroy the wicked, which I thought was pretty hilarious because... They left the town that they had taken over in Seattle because the Hell's Angels were going there. <laughs> so the Hell's Angels decided to gather together to go to Seattle and come, on, come against Antifa. And they booked before they got there. So you see that the evil is going out to destroy the wicked. And, and we are in, in, in such a time right now where there's so many pathways, false pathways, deceptive pathways. And there's only one place for me and you, and that's called a righteous pathway. 
And we got to be very careful that we don't begin to agree with these other pathways and these other false religions and doctrines of demons and deceptive organizations and regimes, even in the area where we begin to agree with them and what they're doing. We have to be careful. We do not fall into their doctrine. Amen? And in John 14, in verse 1, if you'll read it with me, it says, Let not your heart be troubled if you believe in God. What's the word believe mean? Follow. If you follow him, right, if you believe in God, then you're going to believe in me. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not tell you. I go to prepare a place for you. So he, what is he saying? He's saying, listen, man, I'm going to make a pathway. I am the way. I'm going to make the pathway for you because there's a place I'm preparing for you to go to. But there's going to be many pathways that is going to come across your path. You must be careful to maintain this pathway always reminds me, did you ever see roller derby? Well, if you've never seen roller derby, it's pretty intense. When I was younger, it used to be on TV every week, man, you know. And, and, they, and, and they go around this, like, they're all on roller blades. I mean, not roller, roller skates, whatever. And, they're, and they have a team, and they have to pass this baton, and, and they go around and knock people right off the ring and so forth. <laughs> it was pretty intense. My mother loved it when I was a young kid. She was, I used to watch it with her. And no wonder why I grew up violent, you know. And, and, and so in this, it's like a pathway, and it seems like we're honest, we've got to be careful not to get knocked off because the enemy will come and try to knock you off. He'll try and bribe you off. And, <laughs> and he's doing that a lot right now. And verse 3 says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, and that where I am, there you may be also. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. And how can we know the way? That's, that word way means pathway. Jesus said, I am the what? The way. I'm the pathway. There is no other way. I am the truth, and I am life and the life giver. If you want life, you got to follow me. If you don't want life, then follow something else. So there's only one pathway to life. There's only one pathway to eternity. There's only one pathway, and pathway is associated with escape. Amen? Escape. So there's a road, there's a pathway we call it an eternal port, the tabernacle. But he says, I am the way. And no one, no one comes to the head, the Father, except for through me. So he is the only way. There's no other way. He already warned us. He said many would try to come up another way. If you had not known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Why? Because he was the father. Amen. He says, I am the way, the pathway, the eternal port, the roadway, or the journey of mysteries. <laughs> the journey of what? Mysteries. The journey of revelations. And spiritual riches, I am the way. Again, in this journey, there's revelations. Amen? There's mysteries and there's riches to those who are willing to stay close and follow him all the way. It still blows me away that God has allowed us to share his presence. <laughs> to share his spirit to guide us. You know, we can never lose sight that we are spirits in an earth suit. Amen? We can't lose sight of that, that we are spirits in an earth suit. Without this earth suit, you can't stay here. Amen? And we can't allow this earth suit to rule our life. We're to rule the earth suit's life. And too many people are le allowing the earth suit, the flesh, to lead their life instead of the new creation. That's what puts them on the wrong path. Oh, that's why the word says he who's in us is greater than he who's in the world. Well, this thing's in the world. Amen? This, my, our new creation, is in the temple protected. It's covered by the anointing. It's got a new heart, a new mind, a new way, and new desires. 
and it's following the way home. But everything outside is bombarding off of it. It's going to come against. It's going to try to distract. It's trying to bring you lust, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh. Bring the self-trinity of me, myself, and I. That's an eye problem. And Matthew 7, righteous pathway. Oh, hallelujah. And verse 13, Matthew 7, 13. Glory. What a way to start a day is in God's glory, isn't it? See, we got to start it at home first. So I want to encourage everyone, before you come here, repent. Repent from what? I don't care. Repent from everything. Because when we come in here, we don't have to chase so much stuff out of here. See, if you repent, the blood goes before the Spirit. Then the Spirit's waiting. The other night, he's got to wait. He's going to wait. Come on, man. You need to repent. You, listen, I want to flood this place, but you need to repent. You need to repent. You need to repent. Okay, if you don't repent, I'm going to hit everyone else. The blood goes before the Spirit all the time. Amen. Verse 13. What does it say? Enter. By the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to what? Destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Now, the word way means pathway. Amen? It's a pathway. He says, listen, your gate, your, this place, the entrance place is narrow for me and you. In fact, right now, God is squeezing us. We're like going sideways. Because there's so much stuff going on. He's really keep trying to keep his people under his covering. And he warns us, listen, man, it's so easy to fall out of place. In verse 14, he says, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who what? Find it. There are few who find it. And it's not that they just don't find it. They don't stay. They don't maintain that pathway. They get knocked off. He says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravenous wolves. He said, you'll know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree, that means every good spirit, that's a person he's talking about. Trees are representation of you, a spirit. Bears Every good, every good tree bears what? Good fruit. And every bad tree be bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the what? Into the fire. Therefore, by their fruit, you will, you will what? You'll know them. Again, the narrow path is difficult. It's a pathway. It's challenging. <laughs> the enemy's going to challenge you. He's going to try to distract you and get you off, get off. He said, beware of the spirits that will try to mislead you off of the narrow pathway into a destructive pathway. And he says, and turn your hearts to righteousness and away from wickedness. Turn your hearts to righteousness and away, and away from wickedness. Examine what is the leading voice in your temple. What is the leading voice in your temple? Because that voice is a spirit. What is the leading voice in your temple? In Proverbs 4. Again, that's where you ask yourself and everything, who told me that? And where did you come from? Proverbs chapter 4.
righteous pathway. And there's only one righteous pathway. There isn't multiples. Hallelujah. Proverbs 4, starting at verse 10. Is everybody there? Let's speak it, please. Hear, my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. So if he says, hear and receive. In other words, hear and execute. Does everybody get it? Hear and put it to practice. Again, if you're not learning it, you're not practicing it. You may be listening to it, but hearing means I'm accepting it, I'm receiving it, I'm putting it into practice. So he says, hear my son and receive my sayings. That's his word, his promises, his covenant. And the years of your life will be what? They'll be what? Many. I have taught you in the way or the pathway of what? Wisdom. Wisdom does what? Tells you what to do. I have led you in right paths or pathway. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. And when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. That's also known as correction. And do not let it go. Keep her, for she is your life. This is wisdom. Wisdom tells you what to do. Do not enter the path of the what? The wicked. And do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they do not sleep unless they have, to do, have done what? Evil. That's why they work at night. And their sleep is taken away unless they make someone what? Fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. In other words, they eat human flesh and they drink human blood. Verse 18. The path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter upon the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness, and they do not know what makes them stumble. Wow, well, because they're blinded themselves. See, right now, there's a, in a time of chaos, there's times of disappointments, and in your times of things where you get disappointed, you're not going to be successful in everything. You're going to make a mistake. Everyone does, unfortunately. Amen? But we are working to perfection. But we are in times of chaos, disappointments, failures, mistakes. <laughs> and, and, and at these times, we've got to come to a place of self-examination quickly. What path am I on? What path am I on? Am I being misled? Am I being pushed? Am I being pushed onto another path? Am I becoming rebellious? Am I offended? Am I angry? Am I bitter? All of those things put a person on another path quickly. It's known as the path of self. An individual fallen to this place. Examine your faith, your path, and don't compromise it. Do not compromise it. Don't be a man pleaser, be a God pleaser. It's either a path of self or himself. Amen. Choices during chaoses <laughs> will expose your path. Troubling times. One leads to life, one leads to destruction. So many times things come up from your past. It's like, whoops, I forgot about that. I thought that was done and over with. <laughs> now people begin to freak out and go on a, a path. See, anger will always put you on another path. Fear will always puts you on another path. Amen. Again, we must examine ourselves. There's no coincidence during this time right now where there's so much chaos. Amen. There's so much division. We have never seen so much division. There's so much evil. Again, they're no longer in the closet. They're on the front porch. Amen. They're just exploiting themselves. Hi, I'm evil. I'm wicked. That's nice. I'm righteous. 
His righteousness. Amen? It's His righteousness. So light is exposing darkness. That's what's happening right now. See, there are many of us. So many times the enemy makes you want to think there's only a few of us. There are many of us. Many. Many, 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 many. In all places of the world. And light, the light of God's people, his body, is getting brighter and brighter and exposing, exposing, exposing. You don't think they're freaking out? That's why there's so much chaos. Because light is exposing everything. They've been hiding behind closed doors. The doors have been kicked in. They've been hiding in shelters. The roof have been ripped off. They're like roaches that have just been exposed. Scattering all over the place, not knowing what to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Genesis 6. <laughs> See, that interfered with your appetite today, didn't it? Now you're not hungry for popcorn yet. <laughs> Genesis 6. Glory. <laughs> you know, we are definitely in difficult times. There's no doubt about it. The battles are stronger. The persecution is stronger. The criticism, the accusations are stronger. And the enemy's trying to get us into a place of anger and hatred. Now, I hate evil. I may dislike what people may do, but my hope is that they get saved. Again, I don't mind if a person gets arrested, thank God. It's better than what they've been doing. Amen? And hope that they get salvation. And Genesis chapter 6 and verse 1. Let's speak it. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth, and the daughters were born to them, these are humans, that the sons of God, angels, saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of whom they chose. In other words, these fallen angels put on flesh. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the angels, the Son of God, came in, had sex, into the daughters of men, and bore offspring or children to them. These were giants and mighty warriors. Those were mighty men who were of old men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found what? Grace. These were known as the days of Noah, or that's when the angels or angels put on flesh, came into women, produced offspring. This was going on for over 400 years. There were giants. Some of them were 35 feet tall. Some of them were smaller. Some of them looked human. Some of them weren't. Some of them looked pretty cre creepy because there were offsprings coming down the family line. They began to eat mankind. They began to drink their blood and eat them. They were taking over the whole earth, their whole intent. They went into everything. They had sex with anything they could. It was totally perverse. They were taught by the fallen angels how to make weapons. How they taught how to paint their faces. They taught how to make fire and all kinds of other things. They taught all kinds of wicked things to them. They taught them how to conjure up witchcraft and so forth. Everything that they were teaching them was to move them away from leaning on the Lord and trusting on God, but trusting in self. And their intent was constantly evil. 
And the Lord said, I, I, this is done. I can't, you've already you've destroyed all my people. In fact, some of these fallen angels went to Enoch during that time and asked Enoch if he, they would pray for him, pray for them, and ask God's favor to release them and rescue them. And the Lord said, no, I cannot forgive them. And so during this period of time, it's called as the days of Noah. And what happened? He flooded the earth, didn't he? He destroyed everything. Amen? But he caused Noah to build an ark that was known as a way of escape. It was actually in a, a portal. It was a pathway. So during this period of time when God decided to flood the earth and destroy everything, and of course, all of those giants that they had offspring and so forth, all their spirits are now demons. Does everybody get it? So they've had a body, so they're looking for a body now. But God made a way for Noah to escape. And in this escape, he brought Noah to a whole new world. A whole new world. The problem is one of Noah's sons married an offspring of one of the fallen angels. Because she was beautiful and looked right. Can't tell the person by the cover, can you? But you can tell them by the fruit. And so that's when they began to start over again. They began to breed again. And, they, and the uh, giants came back on the earth. That's where you got Goliath and so forth and all these families. That's why when the Lord would send out military, he went to go kill all of the Nephilim, the fallen angel giants, the offsprings. That's what it was all about. Kill the children, kill everything. Because he knew what they were. Is everybody okay? And Noah escaped on the pathway into a new world. It was a righteous pathway. The word says that Noah was righteous. But there was a wicked pathway. And Matthew 24. Now these spirits are still on the earth. There's what ruled the earth. Even Pharaoh. Caesar, all of these were of these same spirits. They've been ruling the earth ever since Adam lost position. And they still rule the earth today. This is what we're battling with. In Matthew 24 and verse 36. Is everybody there? It says, Jesus was explaining to the, them, and he said, But of the day and the hour no one knows, not even the angel of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of what? Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. We are in the days of Noah again. Right now. For as in the days before the flood they were what? Eating and drinking, and marrying, and giving in marriage. Now, listen, he's not talking about normal marriage. Does everybody get it? This is same-sex marriage stuff. Until the day that Noah entered the ark, and they, they did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken, and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. That's known as your temple. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? See, your new creation is a ruler over this household. Amen? This is the temple. It says, in the days of Noah, the earth was corrupt. Is the earth corrupt? It's more corrupt than it's ever been. There's promotion of sin and perversion. There's great deception. There's extortion. There's doctrines of demons. 
There's much wickedness and evil pathways. The escape of grace, which is God's plan from God, is the righteous pathway. Jesus cleansed and opened the pathway with his blood, and he built the pathway with his words. And he leads us in and through the pathway with his spirit. I'm going to say this again. Jesus made way with the plan of God. It's called grace. And he cleansed the way with his blood. In other words, he opened that pathway. He made a way. That's what happened when he was on the cross and the veil was torn. He opened the pathway. And it had to be cleansed with his blood. Then he built a pathway with his words. And now he leads his people through the pathway with his spirit. To escape corruption. And to eternity. There is great chaos right now in strong delusion. It's leading many in the ways of the path of destruction. Oh, happy days. <laughs> In 1 Peter, let's see. I believe it's cha uh, chapter 3. Hallelujah. Use your pen for a second. Glory. Is everybody there? Verse 18. Righteous pathway. Let's speak it. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. By whom also we, he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Now, these are spirits that were in hell. See, when Jesus went to hell and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave away from the devil, he couldn't just leave those people there. He had to give them an opportunity also. Does everybody understand? Because he now made the way for a righteous pathway. And he said, anyone to accept me, as your Lord and your Savior, I, you can follow me out of here. I'm going to preach to you. Many didn't come, you know. Many stayed, believing the other pathway. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 19, by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Listen, if he meant going to the prisons, he wouldn't have to say spirits. Does everybody get it? Because there was no bodies there. There were spirits. But there's bodies in prison. Amen? Verse 20. Who formerly were what? Disobedient when once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah. While the ark was being prepared in which a few, that is the eight souls, were saved through what? Through water. I told you the, oh, we were talking about this yesterday. The world got baptized in water. When God destroyed the earth. There is also an anti-type or what we call a, 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 a shadow that follows. There is also an anti-type which now saves us. Baptism. Not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. So that's what re baptism, John the Baptist came to preach. Baptism was a remission of sin. And it was a representation of that. that when you repented, you got washed by the blood. So that baptism is actually washing of the blood. So it doesn't mean that you need to go out and get baptized with water. I'm not saying it's symbolic because we want to definitely express that. We want to express that to hell, heaven, and the earth, the baptism of water. But it is a remission of sin. If you've never been baptized in water and you die, it does not prevent you from going home because you were baptized with the blood of Christ Jesus. Amen? Through repentance. Hallelujah. 
Verse 21 again, there is also an antitype which saves us, baptism, not the removal of filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. Powerful. So we see here that as the shadow of things to come, Christ came to pave the way, the pathway, with his blood went to hell, preached to them, granting them a way of escape on the pathway to those who were repenting. Amen. And they accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You know, it says that of his long suffering, how many of y'all know God's been long suffering right now? And he's putting up with a lot of stuff. Put up with us. That's enough there. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, Psalm 141. And he's still doing the long suffering right now as in the days of, of Noah. And he's preparing his bride for the escape just like he did Noah's family. It is a pathway of righteousness. Psalm 149. One. One forty one. Verse one. Let's speak it. This is a prayer against a wicked and evil influence that tries to drive the righteous off the pathway of escape. Let's speak it. Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be set before you as an incense. And the lifting of my hands is an evening sacrifice. So do you understand when you're lifting your hands and you're worshiping the Lord? It's actually a form of surrender. And it's a part of sacrifice, of worship. Amen? We don't go half mass. Amen? That means somebody died. <laughs> you want full resurrection, not half. Amen? <laughs> you don't want just, you know, part of half of you in heaven, the other half. You know, you want all. Anyways, verse 3. What does he say? Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Boy, he knows what turns us off the course. Some of us need to tie our tongue into a bow. Lisa, it looks good. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Boy, he really emphasized that, doesn't he? And do not incline my heart to do any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men who work iniquity, who do not let me eat of their, do not let me what? Eat of their delicacies. In other words, participate in their doctrines. Let the righteous smack me. Strike me. Slap me in the head. Kick me in the butt. Maybe that's what some people really need, I think. You know? <laughs> let the righteous strike me. <laughs> Holy Ghost slap. You know, I, I, I told you that already that they were doing that in Nineveh, right? They're all fish slappers. <laughs> Let the righteous strike me. There shall be a what? Kindness. Yeah, you're right. You, I want to see that happen today. You strike a righteous one. Look at it. What's the matter with you? <laughs> you be fighting. People get right in the flesh. Let the righteous strike me. <laughs> and it shall be a kindness. <laughs> Hallelujah. And let him rebuke me. It shall be an excellent oil. <laughs> yeah, they need the oil of joy. <laughs> Thank you for rebuking me. I want to see that too. <laughs> let my head not refuse it. <laughs> Praise God. For still my prayers against the deeds of the wicked. At least his heart was there, you know. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen when he gets slapped though. Verse 6, their judges are overthrown by the sides of the cliff. Yes, and they hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the mouth of the grave, and when one plows and breaks up the earth. But my eyes are upon you, Lord, O oh God, the Lord. In you I take refuge. Where's his eyes? On the Lord. In you I take refuge. Do not leave my soul destitute. 
Keep me from the snares they have laid for me and from the traps of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I escape safely on that righteous path. Amen? That is a prayer to keep you on the righteous path. 1 Thessalonians 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Everybody there? Righteous pathway. Verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge you and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more. In other words, press in more and more. Just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. Strive more and more. Don't get compromised or complacent. For you know what commandments or words we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God. Is everybody ready? He's going to release his will. What does he say? That what? Your sanctification, your separation. Your sanctification is vitally important. Remember, those that are corrupt, don't hang around with those that are corrupt. Amen? Associations bring impartations. Amen? Be careful what you put in front of your eyes and what you put in your ears. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, your separation unto him, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and in honor. In other words, you should know how to say no, get off the wrong path, you know, get away from the wrong path, get away from wickedness, know that when you're associated with someone. Listen, even in your workplaces, You'll, there'll be association. They'll get, hey, man, what's going on? Hey, how you doing? And then somebody starts telling them a joke somewhere that's not right. Walk away. Don't laugh with them. Walk away. Let them get convicted. They may call you self-righteous. You can say, no, it's his righteousness. You know, I wait for people to say something to me. When I go into places, I'm like, all right, what, what's my answer? What am I supposed to say? When so. And, and, you know, it doesn't happen too many times, but when somebody says something, you know, I release something to, in hope to bring a turn of heart or conviction. You know, they want to know why I don't wear a mask or gloves. Simple. I know the truth. It makes them feel like an idiot. Or stupid. I don't know. One or the other. It doesn't matter to me. My hope is that there being a, re a reality to them that they're deceived. It is the great deception. It is the great delusion right now, globally. Can you imagine? This thing took over the whole world, everywhere. Everywhere. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also be before, uh, forewarned you and testified. God did not call us to uncleanness but to what? Holiness. Therefore he who rejects this does not reject man but God who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Wow. Separation from worldly influence by your sanctification unto the Lord. That means in his presence. You are separating yourself to maintain his presence. Listen, you're holding on to his presence no matter what. You hold on to it. You, even if you're being dragged, hold on. Don't let go. The word says you hold on to God, he holds on to you. You let go of him, he lets go of you. You hold on no matter what. Once you get into his presence, you grab hold of the heaven's presence, you embrace his presence, and don't let go. Keep him before you. Amen? So in this, the world has got influences, 
That's why we have to be sanctified, separated, not only in his presence, but his promises and maintaining a specific order of righteousness, which is a part of your call. Putting things in order. Let's go. When somebody's out of order, when their things in their life are out of order, that means they're, they're out of order. Amen? Praise God. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation 1. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 4. Praise God. Is everybody there? John the seven, John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He has made us what? Kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We are called to be kings and priests of our territory. But you cannot be a king unless you fulfill priesthood. Priest is one who ministers to the Lord. If you're not an individual that ministers to the Lord, you got no right ministering to nobody. Because this is where the presence of God, there's an exchange of breath. You are ministering to the Lord. You're releasing your presence for His presence. When you minister to the Lord, there's that worship. These are not just words now. Their breath. Their breath. It is the ministry of breath. It is the ministry of the Spirit. When you're worshiping Him, there's an exchange being made. He's drawing you closer and closer to Him. You're stepping out of yourself. Now, as you minister to Him, you're entering a presence. And in this presence of anointing, He begins to prepare you for war. He loves you and sends you. Everyone say, He loves me then sends me. Priesthood is maintained and it's done through corporate worship and personal worship. Somebody get it? Ministering to the Lord and that's where people fall slack on. They fall back on. They forget that they're maintaining their priesthood. The word says that a priest should know what's clean and unclean. Knows what pleases God and displeases God. Should know God's timing. All of these things are about being a priest. Every one of us is a priest or priestess. You're either a king or a queen. You know, one or the other. Anyways, it's our, it's our responsibility to put the devil in the checkmate. Amen? Praise God. First Peter chapter 2. Glory. We are not pawns. Amen? They always get sacrificed. <laughs> pawns are the first ones to go in the chess game, you know. <laughs> Actually, they use them to detour and distract, get people off the path. First Peter chapter 2, is everybody there? Good. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Priests before warriors. We're going to be talking about the level of a warrior soon. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Let's speak it together. But you are a what? A chosen generation, a what? Royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who were once not a people, but are now people of God, 
who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, having your conduct honorably among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. So we see here that the priests, you must fulfill priesthood. You maintain priesthood no matter what. That's one who ministers to the Lord. It's a place, it's an office of position. It's not even, it's not mentioned as one of the places as offices because it's understood that you can't fulfill any of these offices without being a priest. Does everybody get this? People fall short of that. They're not really stepping in to minister to the Lord. They're waiting for something from God as God is waiting for something from them. Their presence. Exchanging the presence. Your presence for His. Hallelujah. I'm going to close it first, or 2 Corinthians 3. So, in this, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, A priest ministers to the Lord. To the Lord? Breath. Breath. Worship. Breath. 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 Spirit to spirit. Now, the way of escape of everything is to sow your way out. Amen? You must sow your way out. How do you sow your way out? You worship the Lord. You decree his words. Out of your mouth. Out of your mouth. Out of your mouth. God created thing, everything from his breath, his mouth. It's not stopped. That's what's holding everything into place. So if he created us now that we are born again in his image and likeness. The life and death and the power of your tongue is vital. It will be either against you or for you. You're either, the angels are coming picking up your words and working on your behalf, or the powers of darkness are picking up your words and coming against you and setting up traps. Amen? You're either so into the flesh or so into the spirit. One or the other. And so what's coming out of your mouth is you're ministering to the Lord. You are sowing in the spirit. And the word says he ambushes your enemies, and he makes a way of escape for you. Why? Because your only way of escape of everything is to sow. Sowing in the Spirit, sowing in the Spirit, sowing in the Spirit. Again, this is where the problem is people are not fulfilling and maintaining their priesthood office. And when you're not maintaining and fulfilling that, you begin to drift off course. Something comes along. You're too easy to grab something else, and, and it comes a priority to you then instead of God's presence. That's what we see all over the world, isn't it? Right now, people's priority is the vaccination. It's going to probably kill them anyways. We're waiting for a vaccination. We're waiting for them to get delivered. Amen? Amen? 2 Corinthians 3, verse 4. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? 2 Corinthians. I'm in Galatians. No wonder why it doesn't sound. I think, what the heck is this? Verse 4. And we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. That means priests. Not of the letter. Hello. But of the what? Spirit, which means breath. For the letter kills. And the spirit of God gives what? Life. But if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of breath or spirit of God be more what? Glorious. For if the ministry of condemnation and glory, the ministry, 
of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, that remains in much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at, at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in the anointing in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their what? Hearts. If it lies on their hearts, it lies on their minds. It lies on their eyes. That's why the scales came off of Saul, off of his eyes. Amen? When Ananias laid hands on him, he got filled with baptized in the Holy Spirit. Somebody understand it? I want you to know that Saul accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And the scales were still there for three days. He had a visitation from the Lord. Jesus said, I am Jesus who just kicked you off your horse. Amen? And he said to him, what do you want me to do, Lord? Amen? He said, I'm going to have you go hang out with a couple of brothers of yours. You're not going to eat or drink anything for three days. I'm going to put you on a fast. I'm going to clean you out, and I'm going to send one of my servants over, and you're going to get baptized in the Holy Spirit, and you're going to get new sight. Those scales are going to come off, and you're going to understand. And when I fill you with the Spirit, I'm going to give you a new language that's going to speak directly to me. I'm going to release messages to you, and you're going to write the New Testament. And this is where we're at now. But even to this day, when Moses has read, a veil lies on their hearts and on their minds. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now he's going to explain what the Lord is. Now, verse 17, now the Lord is the what? Spirit. He's the Holy Spirit. He's the anointing. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is, there is what? Freedom. There's liberty. But we all with unveiled faces, beholding as in the mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. In other words, the only way of escape is to sow it out. Your way out is to sow out. We must maintain priesthood. Amen? Because we want to maintain that righteous path all the way home. And be an example to the world. As we're cruising in this journey, there'll be many who are along the side of the boundaries and our borderlines of righteous path. They're going to be stretching out their hands. We're going to be grabbing them. We're going to be pulling them in. No matter where you are, no matter where you go, be prepared to release the presence of God in their presence. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you seal your seed, your word, in each and every one here with the blood of Christ and the anointing of Christ. So it grows and, grows and bears fruit for your glory. That reality of identity will become true and manifest in each and every one in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.